Hello everybody, Nick here at Scog and Dicky. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. Now last week we talked about the rear main seal and vacuum pumps on LS and LT engines. Today we're talking about LT engine vacuum pumps, but this time we're talking about the factory vacuum pump that came on the 2014 and up trucks. And we're here to answer some questions. One, what does this pump do? Why did they put it on there? Why did they not put it on the LS or any of the older engines? And actually they quit using this on the 19 and up trucks and they never put it on the Camaros or the Corvettes that use the LT engine. So what's the point of this thing? Why did they spend so much extra money to develop something? And what was it really for? So we're gonna cover some of those questions here. First and foremost, what was this used for? Simple enough, power brake vacuum. It did not do crankcase vacuum like we were talking about in the previous video last week. This specifically was on the trucks and some of the SUVs and vans, I believe as well. And it was made to make vacuum for your power brake booster. Now in a lot of manufacturers past and even GM did too, I think my 04 Silverado, the V6 that it originally came with, actually came with an electric assist on the on the brake master booster. It was pretty funny. And it's kind of weird that they didn't do electric. They had a lot of good reasons for it. These things are pretty low drag. It was real simple to set up. So they decided to try this out to see if they could make this work. Unfortunately, some of you all have heard some stories that it didn't work out that well. There was actually a couple recalls and technical service bulletins or TSBs as they call them on these. And they ended up getting rid of them. Now, the reason that you did not see them on any of the older LS engines any of the other engines and like a small block of truck or anything like that is pretty simple. These run displacement on demand and variable valve timing and it can cause problems with the brake booster. It actually was a reported issue that customers sometimes would experience on the 07 to 13 trucks that had VVT and DOD. That does affect the engine's vacuum draw on the booster. So you're going down the road, maybe DOD has cut it down to four cylinders and all of a sudden a deer runs out in front of you like some, sometimes we experience out here in West Texas and all of a sudden you need to get on the brakes real quick. Well, it would take a minute for you to get a little bit of vacuum so some people did report problems. It wasn't a big deal, but it would really freak you out. So that's why they decided to go to this setup. Something mechanical and reliable unfortunately proved to be a little unreliable. The reason you didn't see it on things like the Camaros and the Corvettes, some of those engines ran a vac or uh, an electric assist, assist for the vacuum or did not have displacement on demand in a few rare applications actually, but there was no need to run this. And packaging, this thing's pretty big. And actually, that's what brings us to the point of this video. How do you get rid of this thing? Now, most of y'all might be watching this because you went to a junkyard or you went to somebody who runs a junkyard and you picked up an L83, an L86. You know, the truck engines, the truck 5.3 and 6.2. They're great engines. They're turning out to be really popular for swaps. And if you ask us, they are definitely the next LS platform as the aftermarket is starting to catch up to them. Direct injection is a good thing. They are a little bit more expensive to swap, but they're the way to go. But then you, you grab this thing, you're trying to put it in a car, you're trying to put engine mounts on and other things, and you're going, golly, this thing is in the way. I'm doing a DOD delete anyway. I mean, I don't need this thing. Well, we're here to show you how to get rid of this. It is simple as unbolting it from the engine and removing the belt. It is a stretch belt. It is not part of the rest of the accessory drive. So this tiny little three rib belt goes to its own independent pulley on the balancer and no tensioner or brackets, real simple. So cut that belt off. You remove four bolts there and of course the gasket and you take this thing off, chuck it in the bin. But it's not so simple yet. See, there's two oil ports that feed this thing. This is a lubricated setup, even though no oil was supposed to get in the, where this fitting was, even though that's what the TSB was for, it did. <clears throat> you need to plug that off. And that is what these two little plugs are here for. GM actually does supply these. We actually get these right here in our warehouse, right on the other side of this wall. They do come pre-sealed and they are designed to go into those oil ports. The upper port is the oil feed, the lower port is the oil return. This is really what you need to seal these up. A lot of people think, do I need to make like a, or find a, a block off plate to put on there? Mm -mm, not at all. Matter of fact, if you put a plate on there and no plugs, you'll have an internal oil pressure leak that you can't solve until you put these things in. If 
you put these plugs in, you don't need a plate. There's nothing wrong with that space being exposed to air or weather or heat. It doesn't do anything, so nothing to worry about there. I do know some people that run the upper port because it's the feed as a feed for a turbo. Turbos have to be oiled, most of them. So they actually have fittings, ICT Billet, Russell and others have fittings that actually will fit in this same spot, gasket and seal up to the block, and will provide you with a nice oil feed. You can't run the bottom as a return. Unfortunately, uh, oil returns have to be pretty large because they are just a gravity fed return. So no, you can't do that on a turbo setup, but you can on the feed. So it makes it really, really easy to set up. If you can fit it though, we have seen ICT Billet, Dirty Dingo, Holly, many others. The adapter mounts and the plates for LTs to fit into old school applications. Most of y'all are doing the same thing everybody does. You're swapping it into a classic car or truck. They do get in the way. And sometimes that's why you had to remove this pump. Well, sometimes you can't use those for a turbo feed, but that's okay. There's other spots you can use too. But if you're wondering what the torque is for these, it's actually not that bad. You can see that it's got a small taper to it and that's along with the thread sealant, that's how it seals to the block. So good and snug, you're perfectly fine and everything will be ready to go. We did cover the old cooler delete, which you probably needed for engine swap fitment. And we knew this one was gonna be pretty important as well. Now we were able to hopefully answer a lot of your questions about what the heck this is, why they had it during certain years and why they finally got rid of it. And we're hopefully answering some questions on how to delete it and maybe some do's and don'ts on when deleting it. So we appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We do these every Friday, so give us a like, subscribe, share, so you can always follow along as we're coming up with new stuff you need to know, whether it be the truck engines, Camaro and Corvette engines, LS, big blocks, small blocks, project cars, and dyno videos. We got a lot of stuff coming up this year, so like, subscribe, share, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff, so we can help out fellow hot rodders like you and me. And I will see you guys next week for another tech video. Thanks for stopping by.